continuation of the previous video invisible man okay what happened next suddenly the stranger raised his gloved hands and held stop so angrily that mrs hall was frightened into silence he was angrily shouting stop okay you don't understand who i am or what i am he said if you want to know everything i'll show you he was very angry so he said all these things then he put his palm over his face and withdrew it the center of his face became a black cavity that is there was nothing he said here and gave something to mrs hall which she took mechanically that is without any thought automatically she took as she stared at grotesque face which is like ugly and uh, like a comical figure it was very ugly okay stared at his grotesque face is like there was nothing in the center the nose was not there okay it was a black cavity so the face was looking so ugly next as she looked down and saw what she was holding she screamed loudly and saw what she was holding and dropped it it was the stranger's nose the false nose pink and shining lay on the floor what happened the stranger gave something to mrs uh, hall and she took it automatically without any thought and just uh, she looked at it what she was holding and she dropped it and she screamed loudly so why why did she scream loudly because it was the stranger's nose the false nose which was looking pink and shining okay which lay on the floor okay then what happened the stranger took off his dark glasses and everyone gasped he took off his hat and with a violent gesture tore out his mustache and bandages okay what did everyone see there everyone was shocked it was worse than they had expected so what did they see all they could see was a figure up to the co the coat collar and then nothing at all there was nothing at all okay what happened now what happened to mrs hall mrs hall open mouthed and horror stuck shrieked at what she saw yes she was shocked to see something like that all at once everyone began to move shouting and screaming okay everyone uh, started to shout and everyone started to scream they ran to the door they had been prepared for scars and disfigurements it was like Uh, they were prepared for some scars and disfigurements by the invisible man okay they thought that this man could harm them okay disfigurements is like a small mark or um, something like which you, which would spoil your appearance okay it was like a tangible horror tangible horror is like it can be understood something that can be understood but nothing was there for the man who stood there shouting some incoherent explanation some uh, confusing explanation it was so confusing because there is someone standing in front of you but you can see only the coat collar okay you cannot see anything else the face is uh, the face is empty okay there was nothing actually but you can hear some noise okay from that uh, particular place so what do you will think it was full of confusing okay and what happened next was a solid gesticulating figure what is that gesticulating figure up to the coat collar he was just showing some gestures instead of speaking and then nothingness no visible thing at all only the coat collar was moving here and there okay but nothing else he, uh, uh, you can see there okay so you can only hear but it was not clear but the gesture was also not clear there was nothing nothing you can see at all nothing was visible only the coat collar uh, and the coat is only visible there the man is totally invisible okay so what happened next the news spread quickly and a crowd collected in front of mrs hall's lodge okay this usually happens in the middle of this mr hall and mrs mr uh, bobby jeffers the constable arrived okay mr Ho bobby jeffers is a constable 
and they both arrived. Jeffers had come armed with an arrest warrant in his hand. Mr. Hall marched up the steps and strayed through the doors of the parlour. Flinging it open, he said, Constable, do your duty. Jeffers marched in. Okay, what did the constable see? What did the constable Jeffers see? In the dim light of the parlour sat the headless figure with a gnawed crust of bread in one gloved hand, which is half bite crust of bread in one, one uh, hand and chunk of cheese in the other hand. Okay, this is what Constable Jeffers saw inside the room. Okay. Now what happened? That's him, said Hall. What's all this? asked a voice from above the collar. Now who is that voice from above the collar? The stranger, the invisible man. It was the strangest thing in the world to hear a voice coming out from empty space. Jaffer simply bought out a pair of handcuffs. Okay. Head or no head, I have got to arrest you, said Jaffer. Okay. Jaffer was very clear and he said that head or no head, you are visible or invisible, nothing matters to me, I have got to arrest you, said Jaffer. Okay, what happened next? Keep off, warned the stranger. The stranger said, don't come near me, keep off. That is what it meant. He threw down the bread and cheese. Off came the stranger's left glove and flew into Jaffa's face, the constable's face. Okay, Jaffa's held the handless wrist. As the stranger tried to free himself, they swayed and staggered and crushed into a chair. Swayed and staggered is same, like to shake or move someone like front or backward or side to side or to shake or wobble them, okay? Okay, they did this. Get the feet, said Jaffis. Wait, I will surrender, cried the stranger. So what did the stranger said? He was uh, ready to surrender and he said, wait, I will surrender as he pulled off his right glove. Now what happened? So he somehow agreed. He just agreed that he is going to surrender. Now what happened? Jeffers got up and took out his pair of handcuffs. Then he stared and he said that, I say, said Jeffers in surprise, how will I use handcuffs when I can't see his hands? Okay, how can I use handcuffs because uh, I don't see any hands here. The stranger ran his arm. Meanwhile, what was the stranger doing? The stranger ran his arm down his coat. And as if by a miracle, the button to which his empty sleeve pointed started becoming undone. Then he stooped down and seemed to fumble with his shoes and socks. What do you mean by that? Okay, it, it was like a miracle. Okay, the buttons of his sleeve was becoming undone and then what did he do he bent down that is stooped is like to bend down and seemed to fumble like fumble with his hand it was like clumsily with his shoes and socks now what happened next someone cried out someone there in the crowd they cried out why that's not a man at all they was answering to jaffers Okay, why? That's not a man at all. It's just his empty clothes. Look, you can see down his collar and his linings of his clothes and not a man. You cannot see any man here. You can only see the linings of his clothes. Okay, okay. Now what happened next? The stranger said, the fact is I'm all here. Hands, heads, legs. And all the rest of it. But I am invisible. You cannot see me. I am here but I am invisible. It's troublesome but I am. It's, it looks like it's trouble but I am. The suit of clothes now hanging loosely over him stood up. Another man said, Invisible? Really? Who ever heard of that? It's strange perhaps. But it's not a crime. Why am I being arrested? Asked the stranger. He said that, 
Okay, it's strange perhaps. I agree that it's strange. Being invisible is strange perhaps. But it's not a crime. Okay, your law doesn't say that it's a crime. Why am I being arrested? What did I do? Why are you arresting me? He, uh, the stranger asked Jeffers. Okay, now what happened? Now what did the uh, constable uh, replied for it? There has been a theft in the village and the way it has happened, it certainly points to you, replied Jeffers. So the stranger raised a question that I'm just being invisible and it is strange. I agree with that, but I didn't commit any crime. Okay, now uh, Jeffers is replying that there has been a robbery which has been happened in the village and the way it has happened, it certainly points to you. Nonsense, said the invisible man. He was very angry. He got angry and he said nonsense. I hope so, sir, but I have got my instructions. I know, I know all about these things, but I have got my instructions to arrest you, said Jeffers. Very well, said the stranger, but I will come, but no handcuffs. Okay, now the stranger had a demand. Okay, I'll come with you, but no handcuffs. The invisible man sat down and before anybody could understand what he was doing, he slipped out of his shoes, socks and trousers. Then he jumped up and flung off his coat. Flung off his coat is like he just threw the coat. Okay. Stop that, cried Jeffers, loudly to those around. He was just shouting, stop that once he gets the things off. Hold him, cried everyone. They all rushed towards the white shirt, the only thing that remained on the stranger. But in a moment, the shirt was lifted up and off. The shirt sleeve gave a sharp blow to Hall. Hall, who is Hall here? Hall is the owner. Okay. The shirt sleeve gave a sharp blow to Hall's face. Jeffers clutched at it, but that only helped to pull it off from Hall's face. That's it. What happened to the invisible man? Now nobody knew where the stranger stood. Look out, said everybody, hitting about in the air. Shut the door. Don't let him loose. But it was no use. What happened to the invisible man? The invisible man had escaped. At the last, the invisible man had escaped. But what was the uh, people inside the inn? What were they saying? They were just saying to look out, uh, shut the door, don't let him loose. But it was of no use because the invisible man had escaped. So this is the story by Herbert George Wells. Now let's see about the author Herbert George Wills, 1866 to 1946, was an English writer best known for his work in science fiction. His most notable science fiction works include The Time Mission, The War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man. He was nominated four times for the Nobel Prize in Literature. This text is about what happens when a person reveals that he is invisible and others, other people's reaction to that. Thank you children.